So yes, we know according to physics that fiber optics will probably always have a faster capability and lower latency than our beloved Starlink. But does that mean it's really noticeably different? I, I wanted to answer that question for you guys because it's a uh, common question of just because the wireless AC or the newest, latest, greatest, right, eight wireless six is faster, does it really noticeably faster? Make sure you stick around to the end because I have some things to summarize this. But basically what I wanted to do is go to a couple ad heavy blog websites. I wanted to go do a couple Google searches, load some YouTube pages and up download some files like a PDF file, like a photo size file and a video size file and then do some speed tests and latency tests, okay? Basically most people's use of the internet, let's be real. So first things first, we got Engadget. It's a common website for most tech people. I, I go to this website very often to kind of see some headlines, but it also is very ad heavy. And I wanted to kind of factor that in loading up the blogs. As you can see, it, there's really not much of a noticeable difference as you're scrolling through there. And in fact, the ad does load a little bit faster at the bottom on fiber, but other than that, you'd probably never notice the difference. And just to be clear, this was, you know, an incognito window, no ad blocker, no nothing, nothing else open, just this. The second website is Lifehacker. Again, another ad heavy website. I just kind of wanted to show you another example of this. And, it, and it, interestingly enough, you kind of see a white flash if you go frame by frame faster on fiber. But when you look at the Starlink side frame by frame, it actually loads the pictures and images a little bit faster, which is actually kind of interesting. The fact that it does load the ad or the images faster, but not the background and all that. Obviously, again, not much noticeable difference, almost nothing at all. So how about something that happens 3.8 million times a minute, the Google search. Now I currently used a website called Let Me Google That For You to basically make sure that they can happen at the exact same time, essentially. But basically, you can see it's a little bit faster on the fiber. It was a little bit different. But also, I did notice the Starlink actually did not load the Wikipedia section on the right side there. Um, I'm not sure why. Again, there's no ad blocker, no nothing. So uh, I'm not sure why, but that did not load there. But again, basically no difference. How about loading up my favorite YouTube channel, Before You Buy? That's right. I hope it's one of your favorites and you consider subscribing. But basically, when the page loads, you can, again, hardly notice the difference. All those thumbnails are scrolling through, loading just fine. And even the preload, as you kind of hover over one of those thumbnails, you can kind of see it preloading the video and everything. You don't really notice a difference. Now, I'm not sure why I didn't record this, but I didn't actually click on the video to kind of see and even scrub through the video. On the Starlink, I did not notice much of a difference in you know, hindsight. I wish I would recorded it, but I'm sure the fiber may have been just a touch faster in theory, again, in theory. But I, looking back at it, thinking about it, I did not notice a difference in the use. Now that's kind of the key theme here, right? Do you actually notice a difference in usability? Okay, so now let's get to some speed tests. Obviously, I have internet that's 250 down, 250 up on fiber, and Starlink is just kind of hit and miss for me right now. So obviously, the, the speed test, it got blown out of the water here with the fiber, right? We got 241 and 258 on the fiber side and 20 and 20 on the Starlink side. Now, I have seen faster numbers on the Starlink side. In fact, you can kind of even see it rev up there a little bit, but you know, at this moment, I'm getting about 20 and 20 versus the 240, 240, whatever. But again, you don't really notice much of a difference depending on what you're loading. So let's check the latency. I went to test my latency and you can kind of see they're going all over the place, but it is pretty high on the fiber. I'm not even sure why that would be. Maybe it's the test my latency side. Again, with latency, you can only control so much, but then after it gets to out of your hands into another server, it's that server's job to handle some of the latency, right? And the, the connection to you. So obviously the F Starlink side did struggle just a little bit here compared to the fiber, 
but I just wanted to kind of show you those numbers. Before we get to things to consider, this is kind of a section that could affect some of you guys. Downloading attachments from emails maybe, or downloading a picture, right? So interestingly enough, downloading a PDF file of only 47 kilobytes, it didn't even notice a difference at all. You basically clicked, and by the time the browser would load it and show you that it was downloaded, there was not much of a difference at all. Then I went to about a picture size, like a high res picture photo. That was about 31 megabytes. Same thing, very close. Fiber was slightly faster there, but realistically almost the same. But once you kind of got up to some of the bigger files, now I downloaded it like a 219 megabyte video file. Now this would be a pretty short high res video, um, 1080p video, you know, you could get a little bit more video out of that, but you could start to see the difference here, right? And this is where obviously the higher throughput, the bandwidth there, not just dealing with latency, this is where the faster speeds will kick in. Now again, going back, sometimes you will see those faster speeds on Starlink as well. In fact, even recently, Elon Musk said he plans on dropping the latency and increasing the speed up to about 300, and the technology is only going to get better. And yes, the fiber has low latency and high bandwidth, but it's clearly not accessible to everyone and definitely not mobile. And the cool thing is SpaceX just recently filed for FCC to have it mobile. That's going to be incredible for the RVs, camper, you know, the cars options are going to almost be endless, right? So the big question is at what point is it fast enough? Well, one major factor can be how many devices do you have connected, right? So are your kids playing video games? Do you have iPads and phones and tons of different devices? This was totally secluded, pl wire plugged directly into these devices exclusively. Only device on the network for Starlink and the only thing all my family was asleep, so really there's a little bit of network chatter probably from cameras or different, you know, internet of things on my fiber side, but realistically, hardly anything. So, again, what are they doing on the network and what, how much bandwidth does each of them need? As we showed, the major factor was when you were downloading larger files or even uploading larger files, right? So, if you're going to be like a YouTuber downloading big video files or syncing video files back and forth, maybe online backups or something like that, heavy Google Drive user, maybe a higher bandwidth would come in handy. Now, again, Starlink could be capable of that, just depends. And just kind of for a point of reference, I believe a full stream of Netflix at 4K is around 16 megabits. So you can see here, I was getting about 20. So if someone wanted to watch a 4K stream at 16, now I'm only getting about four or trying to share that. Their TV is going to start buffering or drop quality. That's where it can start to have some issues with bandwidth. So for latency, it actually depends on gaming usually. That's where you hear about it the most, where if that first person shooter, that instant reaction can actually save your life in the game. Uh, just to put it in perspective, 100 milliseconds is a blink of an eye. So when you think about the latency we're getting on Starlink is less than a blink of an eye. It's actually pretty incredible to think about as going up to low orbit and back in plenty of time. <laughs> but that can also make a difference on video calls or audio calls. Sometimes, you know, when you kind of get that, hello, 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 oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. That's because of high latency phone calls and you're both starting to talk within that short period of time. Elon is really pushing Starlink and he's touting 42,000 satellites. He's pushing 60 satellites up at a time. He's wanting to drop the latency, increase the bandwidth. Who knows where this technology can go? Now, that's not even considering Amazon has a company coming up wanting to do the same thing, and who knows who else will jump in there. So, exciting times. Let me know what you think. Is the latency or speed going to be an issue for you, or are you just so excited that you finally have an opportunity to get decent quality internet at your house? Let me know. Until next time, I really hope this helped. If so, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. See ya.